Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Today we're going to talk about something in Photoshop called Select and Mask. There's a lot of functionality found in Select and Mask, and it can be a bit confusing to use, particularly for those that are new to Photoshop. Now, to use Select and Mask, you first get a selection of something in your photo. For this demonstration, I have this stock photo, and it has a very obvious subject, the model, and I want to get a selection of the model. Now, it doesn't matter what tool you use in Photoshop to get your selection. Uh, for example, I could use the rectangular or elliptical marquee tools. I could use the lasso tool, or I could use any of the tools found in this little cubby, the object selection, quick selection, or magic wand tool. The advantage of using one of these tools when you have a very well-defined subject that you're selecting is you have a conveniently located select subject button up here. So I don't even have to use the tool. I could just click this button. Now this button has two options. You could either allow your local computer to do the selection, or you could allow Adobe's computers to do the selection. Um, Adobe's computers are gonna do a better selection, but the disadvantage of that is it takes longer and you have to upload your image to Adobe. You may not wanna do that. You may wanna keep your image on your computer and not send it up to Adobe. So we could do device and that's quicker anyway. So we'll just do that and quick, quickly get this selection. And you can see we have marching ants around the subject. This is where select and mask comes in. This is where we refine the selection. We make the selection better. So we'll click on select and mask. And you'll see now with this dialog, I happen to have the view called overlay on. There's a number of different views. And this is the first thing I recommend you do when you open an image up in the select and mask dialog is pick the view that works best for your image. Sometimes one view will work great on, that, on one image, but it's horrible on a different image. So go up here where it says view, and you can see there's a number of different ones. Let's look at onion skin. Let's look at marching ants. It's, you know, obviously there's that overlay view I mentioned. There's on black, on white, black and white, on layers. Now just glancing at it, it looked like on black and overlay were the best for this image. Specifically on black looked the best. I could see the problems around her hair very readily with on black. Although I could see some of the problems with their hair with overlay, um, on black, I could just they were just more obvious. So I'm going to go with on black. Now, one thing about using on black, uh, it has an opacity slider, and often, for no reason whatsoever, uh, Photoshop will have the opacity slider at 50 when you first use on black. So remember, you probably want to have that on 100 usually to use that. Now, we have some checkboxes here. The top two I'm going to come back to. Let's talk about the next two, real-time refinement. As you move a slider, it's going to be continually refining the edge. Um, if you have a slow computer, this may bog down your computer or cause it to lock up. That happens, uncheck that box. Also, high-quality preview uses quite a bit of computer resources to give you a high-quality preview. Find this is running really slow, causing your computer to lock up, uncheck that box as well. Now, next we have presets. Actually, this is like selection presets. If you do a selection and it was the best selection in the world you've ever done, and you always take similar images that would require similar selections, meaning these sliders are in specific positions, you could create a preset. Go to this dropdown, save the preset. Then when you have a similar image that would require this same settings, just load that preset. Also, instead of using a preset, you may just want to remember settings. Maybe you have a group of images and you need to clip the subject out of all those images and all the images are very similar. In that case, do it once, get your settings set so you have your perfect selection, then just click remember settings. Then the next time you open an image up in this dialog box, the sliders will be where they were, were left last time. So you could do that as well. Next is refine mode, color aware or object aware. Now for this image, it won't matter. We had the subject isolated against a seamless paper background. So the object aware would probably work great. Then again, it was a saturated kind of blue background. She has a saturated green sweater. She stands out color-wise against that background fine as well. So color aware would probably work equally as well. For example, you want to try a different one, just be aware, like I'll click on object aware. It's going to warn you that it's probably going to give you a different edge. Yeah, well, okay. It didn't change at all. So it doesn't matter on this image, but it may matter on some images. Uh, so you may want to pop over to the other one just to see if you're getting a better edge. 
Now you got edge detection. This is where it starts to get confusing. Let's zoom in. I'm going to hit command plus on my Mac a few times, control plus on a PC. I'm going to move over by just dragging on my magic mouse with my finger. Um, if your mouse doesn't do that, what you could do is go over here and just click on the hand tool. Or if you just want to do it really quickly is hold in the space bar and you'll get a hand, a hand cursor and then you could drag around. All right, looking at the edge of her sweater, it looks kind of funky, doesn't it? Going around, yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're going to increase the radius. So that's where Photoshop is looking for the edge. Right now, it's just looking at the very, very edge, you know, the minimal amount. So it might be too much on the sweater or it might be too much on the background. So we wanna increase the radius. So let's go like way out. Well, it kind of like blurred everything. Well, it's hard to see what this does. But there is a checkbox up here at the top that will help you. Show edge. You can see keyboard shortcuts, the J key. When I turn that on, all we see is the edge. Now, the idea here is you want to have this as thin as possible, but still encapsulate the edge. Meaning, you want as little green, in this case, and a little blue showing as you can. Now, there's no exact setting most of the time here because... The edge varies greatly all the way around our subject, around her, the model. And her, her hand is going to be slightly different than like her sweater and her hair is definitely going to be different, right? So you just want a happy kind of medium. So just pull it down like three. Three looks pretty good. We still have some blue showing, some green showing here. But you can move around. Her hair is still going to be messy. We have to come back to the hair. Lots of blue around the hair. But you can see it's probably as good as it could be around three. I'm going to fit this to screen by hitting Command-0 on my Mac, Control-0 on a PC. So we see a lot of blue around her hair, some green at the top of her hand, blue at the bottom of her hand. I mean, there's no exact setting. Now, what you may find is if you, at this point, click Smart Radius, it will give you a more uniform edge around the different edges. Like, one edge is a sweater, the other edge is a hand, the other edge is her hair. It may help. I found it usually doesn't help. We're going to click on that. It didn't change at all. So sometimes that helps, though. So be aware of that. I'll just leave it on for the heck of it. We're going to turn off Show Edge so we see our selection. All right, we still have some work to do here. Now, we have these other sliders. Let's zoom in, zoom in again. Hit Command Plus a few times. Let's look at the top of our hand. You can see it. Oh, it looks really funky, doesn't it? All right, let's go to Smooth. Now, Smooth uses a lot of computer power. So when I move this to the right, it's going to take a second or three to kick in. So I'm going to move it to the far right. You can see the cursor's this leftward facing arrow. That means it hasn't kicked in yet. So you just got to keep waiting till that cursor turns into the brush. There it is. See how it's smooth though? Did a really nice job. Here, let's go to the before after. To get a before after, you could go right here. Show original. Just check that on. There we go. Takes a while to kick in sometimes too. It's not letting me do it. Sometimes it doesn't let you do it for some functionality, so it just won't let us do it here. So there's before, and now I'll do it again. There's after, and let it kick in. Let it kick in. It's taking longer this time. And there, it, it, it actually didn't do it. This is the f weird functionality. Oh, I got show original on. There we go. That took a while to kick in. All right. Third time charm. There, there's nice and smooth. There's not as smooth, all right? So that's smooth. That's pretty effective. That works well. Next is feather. Now, this is something that goes pretty high, but typically you just wanted to feather it a pixel or two. For example, if I put it real high, see how it's really feathering a lot? All that does is feather the edge. So usually this, you're going to want to do a pixel or two, not a lot. Just kind of blurs the edge. This works well when you're cutting something out and you're putting it in another scene. Just blurring the edge a little bit by feathering the edge sometimes helps. But in this case, you see what it does here. So that is quite um, like strong, I guess, for lack of a better term. Now, for contrast, that just makes the edge sharper. Let me zoom way in so you can see like the palm of her hand up here. Let's go to contrast and put that to the right. There you go. So there's like see how sharp that edge is a lot of times for product photography we want a really sharp edge and we'll move that over to the right let's see if before or after works that's the show original there's before there's after there's before and there's after you can see how that works pretty effectively here smooth because that uses a lot of computer resources that show original up there didn't work well 
So there is contrast. Now shift edge. To show this, I'm going to go back to marching ants. You can see how it didn't select all of her hand up in here. Did an okay job over here. So I need to shift the edge out. So I could come to shift edge and move that to the right. And you can see it just moved it slightly out. But then at the bottom, it shifts it out everywhere. So under her hand, it's now selecting part of the blue background. If I shift in, you can see how it shifts in on her hand in this case. So shift edge, sometimes again with product photography, we'll just shift it in slightly and we'll lose a pixel or two of the product, but it usually gives us a nice clean edge, particularly when you use contrast a little bit, and that makes the product look better, or just nice cut out with the product. Because usually the edges of products are pretty uniform, you know, straight and in a corner. Whereas with people, you have a lot of contours and different types of edges, the sweater edge, the hand edge, skin edge, her hair, totally different. So shift edge may not be something you use on an image like this. So to reset shift edge, just double click on the word shift edge. If you double click on the slider, it won't do anything. So you gotta double click on the words to reset this. Now you could clear your selection and start over, or you could invert the selection. So if, sometimes it's easier to select something when you really want everything else selected. So you select that one thing and then invert it. So you have everything else selected instead. So that's that. Now I'm gonna come back to output settings. Uh, let's look at these tools over here. At the top left, we have just a quick selection tool. So when you use this tool, it's, it works just like a, the quick selection tool in Photoshop proper. And you'll have a brush. You have the plus brush you could add to the selection or a minus brush to subtract the selection. From the selection, you have a brush size slider. You also could use the bracket keys. Left bracket key makes it smaller, right bracket key larger. Get the correct size brush. I recommend you use the marching ant view like I have right now. Then you could come in and you could refine this edge with this brush. So you come in and just get a better edge. Now, you may find that it over selects and if it does, you could go to the minus brush right here, or you could just hold the Alt Option key and Alt PPC Option if you have Mac and you'll get a minus brush temporarily as long as you hold that key in. And then you could come in and get a better selection that way. So we'll come in and do this. So there's that. So there's that tool. Now the next tool below it is the Refine Edge Brush. Now to show this tool, I'm gonna to zoom out, I'm gonna to fit to screen, Command Zero. I'm going to go over here and change my view back to on black. Now, when we turn on this tool, this Refine Edge Brush, we have two different brushes, a plus brush and a minus brush, and you of course have the hardness and size of the brush. Default settings are usually fine, and what I found, it doesn't matter if you have a plus brush, plus brush or a minus brush, they both do the same thing usually. For example, under her left elbow, we have some of the background coming through. Now you would think I need a minus brush, right? I want to need to come here and brush this blue part to get rid of it. I'm going to use the plus, plus brush. Why is that hard to say? And get a smaller one, left bracket key. And then we'll come in here and just paint this area right in here over the top of her sweater and everything. And you can see how it did perfect, right? So it did a nice job there. So that is the Refine Edge brush. Now this brush below it is just a regular brush tool. With this, you're going to add or subtract and it's not looking for an edge like the Refine Edge brush does. This is, for example, if I hit the minus key and I paint right here, I'm painting away her finger. Obviously didn't want to do that. So I'm going to undo that by hitting Command Z on my Mac, Control Z on a PC, then does your last step. Obviously, the plus will add. So that is, you know, something you probably wouldn't use that much. Like if for some reason, let's say she was wearing a pendant, and sometimes the pendant won't be selected, and you'll be seeing the background through the pendant, then you're going to want to click that, click on the brush, and then brush like right in the pendant area there, and then that will, you know, clean that up. Now we have an object selection tool. This is the same thing that's in Photoshop proper. With this, you just draw like a rectangle or square over the object you want selected. Here we don't need to do it. Below that is the lasso tool. And if we long press, you could see that there's another tool there, polygonal lasso tool. So you could use that to get a selection of something in the image. Then we have the hand tool. We talked about that and we have a magnifier so you could zoom in. Now the keyboard shortcut, again, for the hand tool, could be in any of the other brushes. 
and you want to get the hand tool again, just hold in the space bar key and you'll get the hand tool. And if you want to zoom in, command or control plus and minus are allow you to zoom in. Command or control zero fits it to screen. All right, we need to refine the hair. That's pretty much all that's left here. We did pretty well on everything. Well, I messed up her hand a little bit here. I probably would smooth that a little bit. Right there. But you gotta remember when you're like using the smooth tool around her hand, it's smoothing everywhere. So that might not always be, uh, it might work one place and not work as well in another place. Let's feather the edge a little bit there. It jumped to a different view temporarily. Not sure why it did that. But anyway, that's that. Now what we could do is we could get the refine edge brush and we could come in here and just refine this edge like that. See if that helps. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, let's do our hair. We have a button up here, refine hair. Sometimes this works. Sometimes it works a little bit and sometimes it makes it worse. So let's click here and let it kick in. And it changed whether or not it worked here. The only way you could undo this is by undoing your last step. Again, that's Commander Control Z as in zebra. And there's that. Yeah, it did help. So we'll turn it on again. We'll click Refine Hair. Okay, we still need to fix this hair. So we're going to use the Refine Edge brush. I'm going to get a slightly bigger brush by hitting the right bracket key. And I'm going to come in here and just brush around her hair like this, like this. And then let go. And it takes a while to render. It didn't really do too much. See what it does over here. And oh, no, it's not doing anything. Sometimes around hair, it just doesn't do that well. But how could I fix this? Well, go over here to the right-hand side, Output Settings. See this Decontaminate Colors? Just click on that. And that will usually clean it up. And you can see it did. So just click on that. Now, when you do click Decontaminate Colors, you have to output it to either a new layer, a new layer with layer mask, a new document, or a new document with layer mask. You cannot output it to a layer with just a layer mask or just a selection. So if I didn't have that check, checked, I could do any of these. But obviously, you can see I want that checked. And when it is checked, you have an amount. So if it, you could try dialing it back and see if it helps like bring in some more of her hair. It really isn't. Just leave it maxed out. Let it render. That's a pretty good selection right there. Now you could try different views and see what it looks like, let's say with overlay view. That looks pretty good right there. So there's our selection and it looks okay. I mean, probably around her hand here, we could fix that. Let's zoom in a little bit. You can see like right in here looks funky. And that's when we could go to this brush. This is a regular brush. Go to minus and then come in here and click paint right in there like that. Now take smoothing down a little bit. Zoom back out, Commander Control Zero. Eh, that's okay. I think that's good. So we'll click OK. Now we have our selection. We're in Photoshop proper, and you see you have a mask here. Now, one thing I want to do, I want to just show you if you want to take this and put it in another photo. Um, I'm going to put her against a wall. So I'm going to leave the mask here like this. And I want to show you a problem that you might encounter. So I'm going to get the Move tool, hit the V key on my keyboard for the Move tool. It's top tool right here. Just click on her, drag her up to that tab, and drop her here. Now she's way too big for this image. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Again, I'm hitting Command minus on my Mac. Then I'm going to hit, get the Transform tool, hit Command or Control T to get that. OK, so now we're going, going to make her a bit more like fitting into the scene, right? Like that. All right, we'll click the check mark to accept that. We'll fit this to screen. Hit Command or Control Zero. All right. Here's where you may run into a problem if you bring the layer mask over with it. If you go down here and I want to put a shadow, so her shadow is being cast on the wall, and I go to FX and I go to Drop Shadow, um, what you may find, it's not showing it now because of the resolution. Let's zoom out a little. Come my minus. Go back to Control T and watch. If I bring the edges in. Double click on drop shadow. Now I'll come in and make it dark. You see how it's got the edge darkened right here? Typically don't want that, right? See that how it's darkening everything? So what we'll do is we'll just undo all of this. We'll go back to our open. 
We'll go back to our original image. What you want to do is you want to get rid of this layer mask by right-clicking on it and applying it. So go to Apply Layer Mask. Now, when I drag her over there and put her in this scene, and I go Command minus a couple times, Command T, and I make it smaller into the scene like that. Let's just say, put it right at the bottom. And then Command Zero to fit it to screen. And then I go and I add that shadow. I won't get that frame all around like I had before. See, it's just sh putting the shadow behind her. So there's that. I just wanted to show you that because you might run into that when you do your compositing. It really has nothing to do with select a mask. But I wanted to show you that. So there is our selection. Now, very quickly, let's go back to the original image. There is another selection refinement tool in Photoshop that is older, and some photographers prefer to use it. It's hidden, though. It's not something you could find that readily. Let's get a selection here. Select subject so we get our marching ants. To get to that older style refinement tool, go up to Select, where it says Select and Mask. Hold in the Shift key and select that, and you get this old Refine Edge dialog. A lot of photographers prefer to use this. It has a lot of the same sliders as the Select and Mask dialog, and it has this similar output, output too, but it's just the older technology, and some people prefer to use this, so I thought I'd show it to you. Because every now and then I get an email from people asking me if, they, if this was still in Photoshop, they prefer to use it. So there is that. And that's it. That is Select and Mask in Photoshop. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.